Hey, what's up YouTube? Reefing ain't easy. Neither is installing a UV sterilizer. I'm going to show you how I installed it on my tank, explain why, and what I think is the best way to do it, as well as just show you at least with a 50 watt Pentair UV sterilizer exactly how to install it from the cork sleeve to the lamp and all that it will be coming up real quick. Um, my UV sterilizer is over here. I have it off to the side. I know it's not the prettiest thing, but uh, water comes in from the bottom then returns back out. Does it do anything or work? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. I'll make another video on the science behind UV sterilizers, but everybody does seem to be happy and the water is pretty clear. So let's just jump into it. So this piece right here is connected to my pump and you can see how the manifold works. It goes up into two returns with some ball valves on them and you know, the easiest way would be just connect to one of these gate valves, install my UV sterilizer and be done with it. But we can see the return is down here, pumping water up. And a common easy way that I could do this, but in my opinion would be a big mistake, would be I've got these gate valves coming off of my manifold here. So it would be, hey, this guy right here, you know, I'm just gonna pull water off of from this gate valve here it's gonna come up and it's going to run through my UV sterilizer and then I'm gonna dump it back into the sump, kind of how this carbon is. You know, the pump pulls it up, comes into the carbon, goes back down, goes back into the sump. So this water is getting cycled a bunch by the carbon before it goes through. That's what you wanna avoid when you're installing a UV sterilizer because it's all about tank turnover. Furthermore, some of that water is going to go right by the gate valve and back into the display and not actually go through the UV sterilizer, so it's not a true closed loop system. In a way, I totally get that if that's what you do, just because, you know, it's a pain in the butt trying to work on hard plumbing and change everything. Knowing that the best way to have a UV sterilizer processing the water is to be in a full loop to where all the water that's coming up from the sump goes through the UV sterilizer and then back into the tank and ideally as deep into the tank as possible so that um, you're getting full tone turnover and not you know cycling one part of the water twice when another part hasn't been cycled so the better you can do that the better off you'll be so I've got a union here I've got a union that you can't see that's right here and then obviously these are unions and these are actually screwed in up top. So what my plan is, is I want to tie in to these unions and not have to actually cut any pipe. And my reasoning for that is, God forbid I do have a leak or for whatever reason I want to go back to this setup, I'm able to do that. And there's just a lot of reasons I know I can't think of that could possibly happen where that's gonna be very helpful. And this is the lifeline to my tank. If I mess something up by like cutting into the plumbing and then it takes me a day to get it fixed. It's a day where I'm like not really cycling the water and it's gonna cause instability in the tank. So I wanna have this shut off for the least amount of time as possible. And I'm just gonna show you how I'm gonna actually install my UV. And I think if you understand the concept behind it and you really wanna do it right and the best of your ability, you'll know what to do with yours. And I mean, if you go all out, obviously it's gonna cost the most money and it's gonna take the most time. But like I said, I could just tie into this gate valve right here and be done in a couple hours. But I just know in the back of my head, that setup would not be optimized and would not be doing its full capacity. You know, these UV sterilizers are not cheap, so I wanna get every penny's worth of it in terms of a benefit. So I'm gonna do the long staking task of actually plumbing it. All right, all I'm doing now is removing the overflow drain. The other two PVC pipes that are in the middle are just drains from the display. And then the two that are on the far edges are the return lines. Now you can see I'm unscrewing the unions for a piece of the manifold that goes to the return. I still have that piece and if I need to I can put it all back together. That's why I chose to do it that way. Right now I'm sorry about the bad camera angle but I screwed in that flex tubing into the manifold and that is the return pump pushing water out will go out through that tube to the side of my tank through the UV sterilizer and now I'm trying to figure out how am I going to have that water return split off and go into the two return lines. Now working 
in such a small space underneath my sump it was pretty difficult and I was really trying to avoid any 90 degree angles mainly so that when the water came back in it didn't favor one side over the other I know I could adjust that with the ball valves but I wanted to see if I could do it without and in the end I realized I needed to use flex tubing on the left side just to make it easier it just wasn't gonna fit to hard plumb it in you'll see that here in a minute one other thing to know if you're curious the ball valve that I have on the right right now is from BRS and it's what they recommended but the other one was actually from my local plumbing supply store and the unions that I put on were spear unions but they were the new spear unions and what I had on there before were the old ones but they did work. Alright that was not easy but I used uh, you know this flex tube pipe because I just knew it was going to be easier to make my connections and to work with. The only downside is the refugium light might grow some algae in there. It'll be fun to test too is it going to grow the same amount of algae for the tube returning from the UV as going into it, but I had to move this guy over to that side to make it all work and fit. And the best part is, you know, we'll see if these unions hold up because they are the new spear unions on the old spear unions. I think it'll work. Looks like it should work, but you never know till you try. Yeah, and we'll see if they hold, but uh, the water will come out here. And then this guy right here is what I had to build to get it to connect. So I'm gonna connect it all and show you how it looks. So I would try to show myself connecting it, but it's just not enough room in here, which is why I'll never have a sump underneath the tank again if possible. So this is going out to the UV sterilizer and then the pipe coming up. And then there's that T split off, which maybe you can see over here behind there that uh, goes up to one and then up to another. And you know, no drastic, uh, 90 degree turn so hopefully it'll flow pretty evenly and yeah that's how the setup is now the rest of the work i can actually film and it'll be on the side where it's just hooking up the actual uv sterilizer this particular uv sterilizer is actually a pentair sterilizer but it's sold as a pool sterilizer in the pool department um so it's a little bit different than the one that you're going to buy from like brs or somebody that's actually for the aquarium now if you look same dimensions same diameter same wattage of bulb all that good stuff the only difference is it's a two and a half inch slip union versus two inch and that it comes with this piece here and this guy right here so basically this goes here and that is a flow sensor that you screw in here so when there is flow it'll keep the light on if you turn off your pump and you kill the flow it'll kill the light. Other than that, the difference with the power is it doesn't actually have a plug. You have to wire that up. So it's pretty simple. You just buy like an appliance wire and I'm still gonna plug it into the wall. It actually just has the three wires that you're gonna, I'm gonna attach to just like a regular outlet. Still plug it in and then unlike the aquatic one, it has two power cords one that goes to the bulb and one that goes to that float sweat sensor or if you want to hook it up to something else to be able to control it it's there but everything else is pretty much the exact same so whether you have one that's for an aquarium or for the pool it's going to do the same thing if you watch my video on the saltwater mixing station you'll see i have a pool pump operating that also from pentair so i have some family in the pool business and uh, getting pool parts is much easier for me than getting aquarium parts but they're interchangeable it's all made to move water. Yeah, obviously that pump's super oversized. And this is the actual smallest um, UV sterilizer you're gonna be able to get that's made for a pool, but it'll do the trick just fine. I'm not 100% sure, but another difference with the pool model is it might come with these mounting brackets and the one for aquariums doesn't. I really don't know about that. Regardless, mine did come with these mounting brackets, which were extremely helpful. You can see from this diagram that you want to install it either vertically or horizontally. I chose to do it vertically and the wall mounts that I'm installing now made it really easy to do so. I thought about putting it on the side of my tank but I had the extra room. It may not be the prettiest thing but I also didn't want to have like a rough 90 degree angle moving it away from the tank. I figure since now my manifold is so big I'm going to lose a lot of head pressure and I was trying to reduce it as much as possible. 
I'll show you at the end of the video what my actual flow rate was, which was really surprising because um, I do have one of the most expensive, highest rated pumps, but I'll leave that for the end. And if you want to check out another video, if I've made it, I'll post uh, in the cards up at the top right now if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're seeing on something else, it won't actually show the card. But of just kind of education about UV sterilizers, I do feel like it's one of the most misunderstood things with the Aquarius hobby. Even the experts don't truly completely understand it, but with my background and kind of pools and just I'm kind of a nerd and research things, I wanted to kind of make a whole video on it and explain what it's actually doing and how it actually works. Because there are different flow rates for killing different things such as bacteria or protozoa. However, there is some things that are often overlooked and missed there that I feel are really important. So check that video out if you're interested in it. But this one's just about the install. So you can see how I used the level and made sure that this guy was going to be mounted good. It has been doing great on the wall there and haven't had any issues. Now I'm just building out the actual bypass, which you can see from this diagram. It's the same for a pool or aquarium, just replace the word pool with aquarium, that you don't have to, but it is recommended that you put the bypass on. And the biggest reason for this is you can just move some valves around and now it bypasses the UV unit. So if you ever need to remove it to do any kind of maintenance or if something breaks, you can easily not have to shut down your whole system in order to do it. Again, it's completely unnecessary, you don't have to do it, but I had the extra room and I kinda enjoy doing these things, so I went ahead and made that. Now, you'll notice connected to the pump are actually two and a half inch unions, but I still put on unions after I reduced it from two and a half down to three fourths, mainly for maintenance issues. I can also just change things out if I wanted to get some more unions and just get rid of the bypass, that would be much easier. And I'd rather disconnect it with those small unions rather than those big ones is why I decided to do that. If you've ever done any kind of hard plumbing, they cost some money, but the more unions you put on, the happier you'll be later down the road when it actually comes time to take the stuff apart, which the flex tubing is connected with barbs, which you can actually remove. It's almost like a union. You'll see I'm using a hairdryer to heat up the end. This makes it a little bit more malleable and easier to put on. And then I have those metal rings that you tighten down with the screwdriver just to make sure it holds. But they, there is a lot of advantages to using the flex tubing. The only thing that isn't good is you might not like the look of it. Plus algae can grow because light can penetrate it, just depending on where you put it. All right, since I plumbed in to my aquarium and the water is going to get cycled through this. I disattached the unions, let it air dry for 24 hours to make sure that the, the PVC glue that I use on the pipe fittings is no longer wet and isn't going to contaminate and hurt the animals within the aquarium. All right, when installing a Pentair UV sterilizer, I'll show you the instructions where you have um, your cord sleeve and then you have this thing that screws on and you have two rubber gaskets, uh, O-ring, and then this uh, rubber one that goes a little bit over the sleeve and a little bit over the connection. And then you're going to put those over, this is quartz, you're gonna put that over there. The closed end is at the top, the um, open end is at the bottom so that you can put the UV light in here. It's best to wear gloves. When I did install this, I was wearing gloves especially with the UV bulb, but even with the quartz, you don't really want to touch the glass too much. If you do touch the quartz though, it's not going to be as detrimental as if you touch the UV, the actual UV lamp. Now, um, when you screw this in, you want to make sure this rubber gasket goes up around all the edge of the quartz. What you'll see is there's going to be a tendency for one edge to come up and one edge to be down. If that happens, um, loosen it and then start over until you get the actual gasket to go all the way around the quartz and it is actually difficult it took me a few times a trick is you use your finger on the inside and you can feel where the quartz is making a connection and sometimes it gets tilted a little uh like there'll be a ridge that you feel you want to feel and then tighten and then keep playing around with that until i'll try to get a shot on camera to where you can see the black part of the gasket if it'll focus here black part of the gasket here 
is even all the way around. If you see that the black part is coming out um, on one side and then down scrunched up on the other side, loosen it and restart. And then you're gonna put it into the UV sterilizer. I'll show you how that's done. There is actually at the bottom of the UV sterilizer, there is a little hole for this to be held onto. So you wanna make sure you get it lined up and you'll feel it go in. And then you have a rubber gasket you need to make sure is on. And you're gonna put this on there. And you have a, um, you wanna make sure it's in. When you look down, you can see that it's in the hole lined up. And then you're going to tighten this threading to make sure that it's sealed. I'm kind of lifting up because this brace kind of makes it, it goes into the brace. Any hand tighten, you don't want to over tighten it, but give it a nice snug so that it's watertight. Now, before you start up the UV sterilizer, you're going to roll up some paper towels and you're going to put it in place of the bulb and you're going to run this for 30 minutes. After being running, you're gonna pull out the paper towels and you're gonna see, is there any moisture? If there is moisture, that means that the seal around the quart sleeve was not watertight and you need to do that part over until after 30 minutes of running water by it, there is no water on the paper towel, no leaks. Then you know it's safe to insert the UV lamp, the actual bulb, because water's not gonna link in and destroy the electrical components. So I actually let mine run for a couple hours. I know it's not the best lighting, but when I pulled out the paper towel, it's completely dry, so I know I'm ready to go to the next step. All right, so when you go to actually use the UV lamp and insert it in your sterilizer, you need to make sure you have gloves on. You don't want the oils of your hand getting on the bulb. And it's best to just avoid touching it at all. So there's a end and then an end with prongs. You want the end with prongs to be up. Okay, so you take your lamp and you're going to connect it. There's four pins to this white connector. Doesn't look like there's any particular order. And they say use a back and forth motion. But you push this in until you have the white part touching the red part so that you know it's completely connected and they actually recommend that you put the lamp in first hold it there and then put the connector on i out of worry of dropping it um, into there and letting it break on the court sleeve i do it out of here just make sure that this lamp doesn't actually touch anything you know even just touching the side of something can be pretty bad for it um you're just trying to eliminate risk now here's a tricky part is this is going to be back and what you actually want to do is you want to loosen this top nut here this top nut right here there's three parts there's this black piece there's this gray piece and then up here is a is a nut that uh, actually makes it stick on the wire so if you if you unscrew this top piece here you're going to make it so that i can move this down on the wire and you want to move it down to where it ends like that so that you have this corrugated spot kind of makes it to where it can't go any further right there like that and then we're going to take this black piece and you actually don't want to tighten it yet all the way because you want to be able to spin the gray and tighten it into the top of your uv sterilizer so we've got this set up here, we've gotten all loosened. Now I'm gonna lower it into the sterilizer. And what I'm doing is I'm making sure as this comes down, you know, by holding it with my hand, gravity is keeping this along there. So you don't wanna actually like have it way up here. Like when I got it, it was up here. You have to loosen this black piece right here where my index finger is. Let it come down and be, uh, and just be gravity to where it's bottomed out. And you lower this in 
until the gray part touches. And there is a rubber gasket where the gray part is going to create an airtight seal to prevent moisture from getting in. Even though there's no water, you don't want moisture to prevent moisture from getting in. So you're gonna screw this black piece all the way back to the top of the gray threads, hold it. Once the gray touches it, now you're gonna screw in the gray. And by having this loose, it allows me to spin it without spinning the wire. And I'm keeping tension on here so I know that, hey, that lamp is bottomed, is not, you know, at the bottom. And then once this is tight to where, just hand tight, you don't have to tighten it that much, don't overdo it. Um, you're gonna tighten this top black nut part now. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna lock the cord in place. So that when I let go, the lamp doesn't just fall down to the bottom. The lamp is suspended in the middle. You had that, you know, four inches up top. So it's not at the very top. And then it also doesn't go all the way to the bottom. It's right in the middle to be most effective for sterilizing. Then you tighten this black piece here, which keeps it suspended and in the right place. So that if I were to push this wire, it doesn't go into the bottom and obviously you can't pull it out. Now the next thing is after you've hand tightened it, you're going to spin this black piece down and just barely hand tighten that. And that's gonna keep everything together so this gray piece doesn't move and everything. And that's how you enter your lamp. And it's pretty great and pretty easy to uh, service because now when we need to replace the lamp, you just unscrew that, put a new one on, put it right back in. That's why I put in this bypass because I don't actually have to turn off my system. All I have to do is open up this valve here and then I close both of these guys. That's why it's called a bypass, is it's actually going to come in here and then it will, since this is off and it can't go through, it'll come up the pipe. This is off, so it's not gonna go that way and then I'll go right back into the aquarium, making all this non-functional. Then there's a drainage, the back side of this, I can drain the water out, I can get this off, I can, um, you know, I've got unions here, unions here, also here and here but I can take off the UV sterilizer. This is just for easier maintenance. It isn't necessary. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier to service when that time comes. There is on this side, I know you can't see it, but I'll insert a picture. There is an air port. And what you wanna do is you wanna turn on your pump and water's gonna start going through here, but there's gonna be some air trapped in here and you wanna release that air. So what I do is I take a big towel and I put it over the port and then I unscrew it and hear the air and until I have water running out of it, and then I tighten it, and then that way I capture it in you know, a towel so it doesn't go all over the floor. Um, that's the easiest way I found to do it. The pool version of this UV sterilizer has this float switch, which I think it's metal, so I don't think it's gonna be good for salt water. I put it in there, I've let it run for about a month, and I'm gonna be re removing it today, and I wanna see if there was any negative consequences like rust, and because I don't wanna take any chances, I'm just gonna replace it with, just with a plastic PVC plug. What is nice with the pool UV sterilizers though is what comes off the power box is a cable which you can cut and it just has two cables when you connect them it's on when you disconnect them it's off so you can easily hook up a switch to turn it on and off which is pretty cool. So I swapped it with just a PVC plug. There was no damage or rust so I think it would be fine I'm not sure what this is actually made out of but as water flows, it makes it connect, and that's what keeps it on. What I'm doing here is trying to figure out how many gallons per hour I actually get out of my pump. I have a Varios 8 uh, controllable DC pump. It's rated for 2,700 gallons per hour, and I do have this on 100% all the way up to the max. Now, I repeated this process a bunch where basically I turned the ball valves to one of the returns off so all the water was coming to one spot and I would fill up this gallon jug and time it how long it'd take with the stopwatch. After doing it a bunch on average, it took seven and a half seconds to fill it up. Now there are 60 seconds per minute, so seven and a half divided by 60 is eight. So I was getting eight gallons a minute, and if you multiply that eight by 60, because there's 60 minutes an hour, I was only getting 480 gallons per hour, which is only 18% of that 2,700, which is 2,200 less than what it's rated for, which is a huge shock to me. And when you learn about UV 
sterilization. It's all about the flow rate, whether you're killing big things like protozoa or small things like bacteria. So unfortunately, I'm not getting the flow rate that I wanted, so I'm going to need to do some tinkering and possibly get another pump. If you're interested in that stuff, you can watch my video on UV education. But long story short, that's an easy, cheap way to figure out what your flow rate is. All right, so that is how I installed my UV sterilizer and the reasoning behind why I did everything the way that I did. I hope you liked the video. If you do appreciate me taking the time to make these, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.